So today is your first day of graduate school. You've been accepted into a PhD program. Congratulations. Being accepted into a PhD program is an accomplishment in of itself. A committee of professors saw your academic achievements and decided that you belong at their institution to study alongside them. The PhD is a pinnacle of academic achievement and there is a really hard road ahead of you. It would be nice to know how it's all going to start. What's your first year gonna be like? Are the classes really hard? When does research start? Are you expected to teach? Do you really even belong here? I'm gonna start by telling you that you can have perfect grades, have a 4.0, and still fail another program. I'm gonna tell you how the first year as a mathematics PhD student was structured for me. Then I'll talk about some differences I've seen in other programs in engineering and also in the sciences. In mathematics, there are three subjects that are widely considered core topics that every mathematician should know something about. These are analysis, algebra, and topology. You know that whole uh, a donut is a mug thing. I was required to take a course in analysis and algebra, and I was left to select a third course according to my interest. I didn't take topology. Instead, I doubled down in analysis, and I took complex analysis, which was at the level of John Conway's textbook. The classes themselves weren't terribly harder than what I had in my senior year of undergrad. In fact, our first year real analysis course was taught out of Rudin's Principles of Mathematical Analysis, or Baby Rudin, and some students actually use that text in their undergraduate advanced calculus course. For algebra, we studied from Dumb and Foot, which was a tome of abstract algebra, and honestly, I'd highly recommend that text to anybody studying the subject. I found it much more accessible than, say, Hungerford's textbook, which is a lot more terse. Now, in a sense, real analysis and algebra were much more important for me than, say, the complex analysis course. This is because they were attached to my first year exams. In graduate school, grades don't matter nearly as much. I mean, don't go failing your classes, and you should probably try to get a good grade, but you aren't necessarily aiming for a 4.0 anymore. Later, when, as you finish your PhD, you'll be more focused on your research and the extra effort you put towards getting perfect grades is effort that should be going into your dissertation. The better your dissertation, the better your job outcomes. Many professors are fully on board with this sort of balance, and many grade easier because of it. In fact, I put less effort in some of my graduate courses than I did in any of my undergraduate courses, and I left with better grades. And here's the kicker. No matter how good your grades are, you can still fail out of the program. In your first year, you aren't gonna be worried about getting research done. In mathematics, that is something that picks up in your last three years of the program. What you need to worry about are your first year exams. These are four hour exams consisting of seven or so questions. Usually you can select one or two questions you don't want to answer and the rest are graded by committee. These questions are pulled from an entire year of material from one of your classes. In my case, we had two exams, one in analysis and one in algebra. My department gave us three attempts to get through the exams. And if we didn't complete them by the end of our second year, we wash out. I'll tell you how those went for me, but let's get into the first major time sink of your PhD program, and that is teaching. Most PhD students are funded throughout their program. That means they get a stipend of about $20,000 per year, they get benefits such as medical insurance, and their tuition is covered as well. This is great news for many since that means no more racking up student loans, and even existing loans can often allow you to defer payments and sometimes even interest. Just double check that the interest is deferred before you start ignoring them, because you don't want your loans to double in size while you're studying. So where does this funding all come from? In your first year, it'll likely be a teaching assistantship, but later you might become a research assistant under a professor. Our A's are less common in mathematics, especially pure math, but they're not unheard of. Your responsibilities as a TA will be to either grade and or lead discussion groups. I was given three classes of students to meet with once a week where we would go over homework and say pre-calculus and algebra. I would conduct quizzes and then later grade both the quizzes and the exams and all in all it was about 10 to 20 hours of work per week but it could easily balloon into like twice that if I wasn't careful. I think being a TA and standing in front of people is great for a lot of mathematicians. You learn how to speak technical language in front of large groups of people, and later in your PhD journey, there'll be much higher stakes where you have to present your research at a conference and also defend a dissertation. So those PhD exams, if you really grasp what was happening during the first year, then you could potentially walk in cold and take them. I literally went on a backpacking trip through Europe for two weeks before taking my first year analysis exam. I breezed through it and I got a PhD pass. And I thought I could do the same for algebra. I was wrong. In my department, there are four grades available for the exams. You have a high pass, get everything perfect. A PhD pass, it's good enough to pursue a PhD. A master's pass, which is not quite PhD material, and fail. My first try on the exam, I failed. 
It was probably the biggest slap in my face since my junior year of undergrad. In the past, I had done poorly in some college classes, but never in mathematics. It was a shock to my system, and I decided I wasn't going to get washed out because of seven measly questions. Most departments give a lot of resources to help out with PhD exams. My department had a repository full of previous exams, which helps when you want to see how your studying is going. But never look at an old exam until you know you're ready to take it, otherwise it loses most of its value. These exams can also help you find patterns and favorite questions, like show A5 is simple. There was another unusual thing available at my institution, and it was a bank of 150 algebra problems corresponding to the textbook Dumb and Foot. I pulled those questions and I worked on them for two weeks before walking into my second attempt on the exam. Apparently. Those weren't the right questions because I got a master's pass this time. Interestingly, that A5 is simple question came up on this exam and also on my previous one. These two attempts were separated by a semester and I had one more try before I might get washed out. Now the purpose of these exams are to make sure you have a good general feeling for your subject. From speaking with other people at other colleges and departments, I understand that these were actually on the more difficult side. Some fields don't have a general comprehensive exam at all, but rather have one large area exam designed by a student's PhD committee. This can be something like 20 questions concerning high level research papers and the exam lasts an entire day. Other departments within my alma mater had an exam based solely on undergraduate materials, which you could take on your first day of your PhD program if you felt like it. There will always be some sort of exam structure, but it changes depending on what you do and where you go. After these two exams, PhD students in my department had to pass two more exams of even higher level material. For me, that was measure theory and functional analysis. These exams are what determine if someone is going to make it through the PhD program or not. I know when I was a student, there was a lot of worry from the other students of whether or not they belonged in a PhD program at all. They felt that they were surrounded by very high performing graduate students, and whenever they felt confused, they felt like they weren't measuring up. If you are admitted into a PhD program, then you do belong there. It just isn't an easy road. You don't have to be the smartest person in the program to make it through. What it means to make it through your first year is passing your first year exams. Even if you feel like you are a PhD material, if you don't take them seriously, you will get kicked out. And that is exactly what worried me. For my last try, I spent three months reading Dumb It and Foot. I started with the first of the 150 problems and I worked my way down the list. At first, I would struggle with a problem and I wouldn't see any way forward for whole chunks of them. Then, after concerted effort, space repetition, and forcing myself to sit down alone with a book every day, hours on end, something would click. Suddenly, 10 problems would fall, and I finally felt like I was starting to understand things. I got through roughly 120 of the problems, and then it was test day. Two years into the program, and three months of intensive studying for seven problems. If I failed this, I was out. At least, I was familiar with 150 questions that are supposed to prepare you for the exam. I looked at the exam, and when I looked at the problems, I was mortified. None of the 150 problems were listed. A5 is simple, was not there, and I spent an entire week refining my proof of that. Then. As I read the problems, I realized they were really similar to the ones I've actually done already. Those months of work finally started to pay off. Doing those problems and repeating them over and over again really helped me internalize them. They weren't problems anymore, but general techniques I can use to solve new problems. I did my best, and I can't quite remember how many I solved successfully. I had to wait a month to get my score back. I wish I could tell you that those three months of effort led to a high pass, but I can't. I got a PhD pass, which was respectable, and I can move on in my PhD journey. The courses in your first year can be challenging. Take them seriously. But you will be pulled in many directions, as a TA and as a student. In engineering, you might also start your PhD program with an advisor, where you'll be getting your feet wet with some research. But the most important thing is that you want to get through those PhD exams. You can do it. Just give yourself a lot of time to study, talk to your professor if you run into a problem, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. We don't all make it through on our first try. Now, this is the first year experience of somebody in a US university. And European universities work very differently. I plan on making a follow-up video about that here soon, so please subscribe if you want to catch it. In any case, I want to thank you for watching, and I'd really like to get your input here. If you've already been through it, what was your experience in your first year of graduate school like? How are your exams structured? What was the hardest part of your first year for you? If you are just starting your first year, then please comment below and let us know what the sort of things you're actually worried about. And finally, thank you again for watching and I hope you have a great day.